Welcome to Western Perspective. I'm Sarah Smith. As the concerns on the effect of climate change grows, so too do the quest to increase legislation to protect the rights of the environment and future generations. WA Greens MLC Diane Evers introduced the bill recently, saying the Rights of Nature and Future Generations bill was required to protect their rights, calling it a voice to the voiceless. So what will this bill mean for West Australia and will it be enough to protect the environment? Here's a feature interview. Diane Evers, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, so you've long advocated for the rights of the environment. The first question that needs to be asked, does the environment have rights? Not legally. Uh, we've got rights for humans, for people, and we've then introduced rights for corporations, but the environment, it misses out completely. And why does it miss out? Uh, because of the structures that we've set up. The legal structures are set up to support um, people, and of course, we then brought in the corporations, as I said, but the environment, other than if, people, if there's something specifically saying that a corporation isn't supposed to be polluting or causing damage, um, a lot of things happen. And there's nobody responsible for it in the end. And there's no way of uh, people around the, around the state to be able to press charges and say, you know, we want, to, we want to take this one to court because they've broken a law, they've polluted something, they've damaged it. So what this bill does is bring that into place so that people can say that these companies have done damage and hold them to account. Why is it important to recognise the rights of the environment? Because otherwise damage happens. And as we can see around the world, uh, the environmental damage that is happening is causing um, significant problems. You know, not only climate change, but you know, we're, we've got less rainfall, we've got um, what polluted waters, we've got plastics in the ocean. There are so many major issues happening with our environment and nobody is being held to account. I mean, you just look at some of the issues with, um, with oil spills and the damage that that causes. And often they get away with a, a bit of a fine and you know, expected to clean up, but they find it's too hard and walk away. Let's take a look at what's happening here at WA. Is the state government doing anything to recognise the rights of the environment? Oh, you know, we do have the Environmental Protection Authority, and that's, that's a good start. It lacks teeth, it lacks funding, it lacks the ability to actually hold organisations to account. So what you've got is they are overstretched with their resources, trying to look at a, a, a broad range and a large number of different uh, projects or developments. And I would say that things have been slipped through the cracks and sometimes they get through because if, it's, if the community doesn't raise a lot of, um, a lot of interest and, and expectation on the EPA, Sometimes they may not get the look that the community would like them to have. They wouldn't get uh, the research into it, and then things slip past. You know, we've got the case of uh, the Yaliri mine, where it's uh, been approved, even though that they know there's a certain sort of uh, underground fauna that may become extinct from this. Um, but, you know, underground fauna, it's not cute and fluffy, and most people aren't really aware of it. And with the systems we have, where we don't look into uh, the detail of the interaction of the different organisms in our environment, uh, we just don't value the fact that one more extinction could lead to many other issues. You just mentioned the EPA. Is the EPA heading in the right direction though when it comes to uh, recognising the rights of, of the environment? Uh, it's not really the rights of the environment, it's the rights of humans to have a nice environment. So it's a little bit different because we always look at it from a human perspective and how this is going to hurt us. You know, the fact that we are responsible for the, the animals in, a, in some way, They're responsible to not have them go extinct. So I think the EPA does look at that. They do look at the critically endangered animals, but there's a lot of other uh, parts of our environment that are not critically endangered and may be damaged in the process. And the EPA is, is making steps towards this, but uh, I think they need a lot more, uh, a lot more strength behind them. Um, you've introduced a bill to Parliament to try and recognise the rights of the environment. Can you tell us a little bit about what that bill is about? Well, it's actually the rights of nature and future generations. So it's also saying if we hurt something now that stops future generations from being able to flourish and have the same uh, abilities or same environment that we've got, uh, that there will be fines and possible prison sentences for people who do this and that would apply to corporations and the directors of those corporations as well. 
because it's only when you start bringing in significant fines or even the possibility of, of prison that people will take note and say, wait a second, if I destroy this or damage something or, you know, letting uh, toxic chemicals into a river system or something, yeah. it's only then that they'll actually take note of it, I think. And uh, by having the ability within this bill for people in the just general population as well as uh, indigenous people to be able to join any of the actions that are taken, uh, then we're not relying on government to try to hold these corporations to account, but in individual citizens can. Now you mentioned uh, future generations in relation to this bill. Um, how important is it for future generations? Oh, very important. I mean, you just have to look at the student strikes happening around the world. They're trying to tell the older people who are running the governments and the large corporations to wake up realize that something is happening, tell us the truth about what is happening and act, do something now because we need change, we need to protect it for those future generations. And it's my feeling when I talk to some younger people that that's their only fear is the thing that the, the world is being damaged so quickly that they're not going to have the same opportunities that we've had through our lives. And finally, where do you see the rise of the environment heading from this point on? Well, this is happening around the world where different organizations and different governments are starting to uh, allow for the rights of nature, often just for a specific part of nature, a, a river or a tree or the Great Barrier Reef. We're trying to do that there, Margaret River. And I, I, I really applaud what they're doing. I think it's a great step to do it that way. But it is looking at the environment as a piecemeal sort of thing that we can break up and, and just look at one part at a time. And I want to look across the whole of the environment. So with this, I'm raising the, the issue. I'm hoping that our government, the WA government, actually listens and takes note of it and has a, has a look around the world to see what else is happening. Because we need to bring these rights in. Because if we don't give the environment rights of its own, we're not going to be able to protect them as we should be. Thank you. And that's Western Perspective for this week. Until next time, back to you, Ivan and Danny. Thank you, Sarah. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on the website and social media pages. Until next Sunday after 8 p.m., thank you for watching. Good evening. Take care. Mm -hmm.